So I put this video together because I uh, kept getting asked questions about the setup that I'm using for video calls. Uh, so I'm showing it off. Uh, what I'm using now, instead of using a standard web camera, I'm actually using an old DSLR that I have. Uh, the DSLR is feeding video to the computer through a device that causes it to look like a regular webcam. You might have seen these um, promoted online. This is the Elgato CamLink 4K. Uh, while reviews of it have been glowing, my feelings are a little bit more mixed, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but with respect to the setup, I'm able to get a much clearer picture with the DSLR. Um, I can control the depth of field, so you can see that everything that I have in the background is pretty much blurred out, which is how I prefer for things to be. Um, and uh, so I have control of that, especially since I'm using a manual lens. And I guess things would make more sense if we go and compare how the video looks on some of the other camera options that I had. So let's take a look at how things look on my MacBook Pro and how they looked on a Microsoft um, Live Cam that I have. So this is a recording sample that I'm taking on my MacBook Pro. Uh, this is a 2014 model. Uh, I'm using both the internal camera and the internal microphone uh, that are on the device. So looking at it on the screen right now as I'm recording, it looks a little grainy, but it's still okay. It's more than sufficient for doing meetings online. Uh, now, let's see how it looks on one of my other devices. And this is how things look and sound using the Microsoft Live Cam. Now I've switched from my Mac back to my PC, reason being, when you plug this into the Mac, for some reason the exposure gets turned way up, and if you want to adjust that, there's an additional application that you have to purchase to get access to those controls. So it just looked horrible on the Mac, but you can see it looks okay on the uh, PC. Uh, I will say looking at this as it's recording, the uh, video is a lot less grainy. Uh, it looks like it has a wider field of view, so you can see a little bit more that's to the left or to the right of me. Um, the you can also see that pretty much everything is in focus. Uh, now let's go back to the DSLR and take a look at how things are looking there. So going from those to back to this, you can see that there is a bit of a difference in quality. Um, now, I will say that if you're self-conscious about any blemishes that you might have, then you might not want to use this setup because they come through also a lot more clear and you start to see there's some benefit or value for the picture to not be uh, is sharp, but otherwise if you're okay, it's a great option to have if you want to get a sharp picture coming through. Um, I did get some comments that it almost kind of looked like it was documentary quality as it was coming through on the uh, other side of the feed. Uh, now, as far as the details of my setup go, for a camera, I'm using the Canon 5D Mark III, which is a bit of an older DSLR. Uh, since then, they've moved on to the Mark IV and then moved on from that to making some mirrorless cameras. Now, for some of the cameras that are out there now, you don't even need to have this HDMI adapter. You can instead just download a firmware update or download a piece of software, and uh, that will allow you to use your camera as a webcam. So if you already have a camera, first check and see if there's uh, any type of software or firmware available that will allow you to use it that way. Um, oh, and I did get asked if I was using a PC or a Mac. This setup will work on uh, both devices. Uh, for positioning my camera, uh, I already have some hardware for doing that, so I didn't go out and buy anything uh, additional, um, but I suppose a desktop tripod would work, but what I'm using right now is I have a K-clamp and I put a tripod extension on it, and that's what I'm using to uh, keep my camera at a certain height. On top of the tripod extension, I did put a ball head adapter on there so that uh, I could position the camera in uh, whatever way that I like. And just so that I don't have to worry about the batteries on my camera going uh, dead. I don't have a battery in there right now, but I did put in an adapter that looks like a battery and it will keep the uh, camera continuously powered. For focus, and this is completely unnecessary, but I already have this. Uh, I have a remote focus device that's just connected to the teeth on the lens. So if I want, I can uh, change focus as needed. And with a shallow depth of field, that's kind of necessary because if I lean back a bit, you can see I start to fall out of focus, uh, but I can grab into the remote focusing knob and adjust my focus without having to reach into the camera and, and uh, adjust the lens. Now, if you're using a camera where it will actively change focus as it is recording, uh, then this is something that you don't have to worry about. I'm using completely a completely manual uh, lens on this camera, so that's not um, an option. Plus, this camera will not change focus once it starts recording.
Now concerning the one thing I don't like about this device is its reliability. I use one of these at home and have been using three of them at work. Um, and when they work, they work great. But the problem is every so often, uh, and it could happen while you're in the middle of using it, it just seems to lose video feed. And sometimes when that happens, the only way I can get the video feed back is to unplug the device and plug it back in. And I'd really love to be able to just plug this in in an area where I can plug it in and forget about it. But since that happens every so often, I can't really do that. So I keep it plugged in in a place that's a lot more reachable. So that would be the main drawback about that that keeps me from having glowing fillings about it. Uh, there's another device that is coming out made by Atmos. It's not out yet, so I haven't gotten a chance to take a look at it. But if you're considering going with a setup like this, that might be another device to look at and uh, look into and see if uh, there are any reliability problems with it. And if you're curious about the problem that I'm running into, if you do a web search uh, on Camlink 4K lost video signal, uh, then that should bring up a number of results where people have run into uh, similar scenarios with the device. Um, but that's pretty much what my setup looks like. Uh, I don't think there's any other details really get into. Uh, the audio quality is not that great, but um, I could probably fix that up easily by putting an external microphone on the camera. I already have some. Um, they're in a box right now. Uh, it's just a matter of pulling one out and plugging it in. But most of my external microphones run off of batteries. Uh, so it, to me, it wouldn't make sense to plug it in because then if I don't forget to turn it off, then the battery is going dead. And then uh, the next time I go in a meeting, I might wonder why there's no audio coming through. So this is just a simple setup that works. I don't have to do too much to it um, from one meeting to another. Uh, the only thing I uh, pretty much do is flip the camera switch from off to on and then it's good to go. Um, but if you have any other questions about my setup, just feel free to ask me. I'm more than happy to share. Um, and if I do anything about my audio, I might add another video just showing what that looks like.